I am Coach Wendy Hazel, and I coach women who are women of faith, um, in particular, women of faith who are in difficult relationships, narcissistic relationships, experiencing emotional abuse. And I coach them in how to find inner peace, even though you may still be in that situation, and so that they can have a more satisfying life. And so that's what I do. And so tonight in Tuesday's Thoughts and Talk, I just, we just talk about um, something that is just in my mind, in my spirit, the Lord might have brought it to me during the week. And just to talk and to hear your questions, I will try to answer the best I can, um, to hear your questions and to um, hear your thoughts and your comments and your contributions to the topic so tonight we're going to be talking about, I want us to talk about the two faces of silence. The two faces of silence. Silence has two faces. Silence can be powerful and beneficial in a good way. And silence can be painful. And so we're going to talk about those two and um, share if um, you've experienced any of them either for yourself or you've seen it happening to others um, and so we're going to talk on like how we handle that kind of thing especially in difficult relationships okay so please feel free to share invite others to jump on in tonight in this conversation okay so let's talk about the power of silence the power of silence I'm going to read two scriptures that helps us to um, get some a good side of, of silence and how silence can be helpful for us. And the first one is from Proverbs 29, 11, that says what? A fool lets fly all with all of his or her temper, but a wise person keeps it back. So the person who just flies off once the temper is flared and get angry and fly off with their mouth, the Bible considers them to be a fool, to be foolish, and they call him a fool. And But the one who holds back is considered wise. It's considered wise. The question is, which one is more comfortable for you? To fly off with the temper or to hold back when the temper is up? Okay. The other one I'm going to read and share is Proverbs 10, 19, that says, When there are many words, transgression and offense are unavoidable but he who controls his lips oh, sorry about that he who controls his lips and keeps thoughtful silence is wise one second i should have just powered this totally oh there we go yes sorry about that. yeah he who controls his lips and keeps thoughtful silence is wise. And so this one is like saying, when we talk a lot and when we can be quiet and we think we need to say and say and say and talk and talk and talk, especially if um, we just are the type of person we just need to be heard or wanna be heard. What it's saying is that transgression, meaning, meaning um, offense and wrongdoing as well as offense, offending others, you can't avoid that. It will happen when there are many, many words. The more we talk is the more likely we're going to cause offense and transgression. Um, but he who controls his lips and keeps thoughtful silence is wise. So this time it's saying the silence is not about just shutting you up and silencing your voice and not caring about what you have to say, but it's about thoughtful silence where in that silence you are thinking things through and so when i think of the power of silence and the good face of silence in silence i got a chance to really hear what you're saying and in my silence when i keep silent i get to hear what you're saying not just listen and if you notice when you're not silent in that good way and you're just waiting to jump back and say what you got to say, or both people talking at the same time, you don't really hear um, everything. You don't really hear. 
So, but when you're silent and you're looking and observing body language and everything and person, the person's eyes and things like that, you hear a lot more. You hear a lot more. Okay. So in silence, it gives me a chance to hear better and hear more of what this person is saying and what they're probably not saying. In silence, it gives me a time to do some introspection and check on me. Why is it that I feel the way I'm feeling? Why is it I am so angry? Why is it I am raging? And then it gives me that chance to also check and see, is this worth it? Do I want to pay this price? to not to speak do I want to pay that price to speak sometimes it's yes sometimes it's no right but you're paying a price to speak you're paying a price to be heard by this particular individual if it's in a relationship we're talking about you're paying a price to be heard by them and then you want to know uh, is am I comfortable paying that price and that price is, could be exactly what goes on inside of me the stress, the headache after, the migraine after, the, the, the chemicals, the adrenaline in my body. Am I comfortable paying that price just to be heard by this person? Um, and so silence helps me to do that. And then in that, silence also helps me to control my emotions. Control my emotions. Um, I have been someone who think a lot. And I know, um, I remember as a child, I would have been in probably first form of, um, which is like grade seven or um, so. And I loved the silence of studying when and then the whole house is sleeping. I had five siblings, my mom and my dad. When the whole house is sleeping, like one, two a.m., they had a radio station. I think it's Voice of America, it was called, if you're old enough to know about that. And that is the radio that played. And it, there was a sound of silence in that hour that I found beautiful. I loved it. If I'm reading and studying, just as I read it, I take it in. I don't have to go over it again. I just absorb stuff. You know, I just absorb stuff. And I love that silence. But in that silence too, I think a lot and lots of ideas come. And as you know, I'm sure like in that silence now as I'm older, when I got to know the Lord, I hear from God in that silence. You know, I hear from him and I hear things that he's saying and prompts and stuff, instructions and things for me to do. Right. So that is the power of silence. Okay. Power of silence.